next? So my name is Julie Nelson. I am in Austin, Texas. I've been in this business for a very long time. And as Candace mentioned, um, I've been teaching this negotiation class in EXP University for quite a while, designed it a couple of years ago, and we've been rolling with it. So really excited about this new uh, platform to deliver to you. So today we've got uh, the first portion of this, the first half of this is uh, overall seller negotiation, buyer negotiation, some repair negotiation, and here's the glue that matters the most, the psychology that makes it all easier. And we're going to jam pack that into 30 minutes. And then right after that, I have two guests with me, Dr. Portia Ryan and, and icon agent Eric Miller out of Fort Lauderdale. They are amazing. And we are going to, we've got Q&A on negotiation, just tips and best, best practices. So I'm really excited uh, to deliver for, for y'all too uh, today. So the first thing uh, I wanna talk about is I wanna remind everyone how much negotiation experience you already have. So let's say if, if you're newer in the business, first year, second year, third year, you might think, well, I don't have a lot of negotiation experience. As a human being, you have, we, you have so much negotiation experience. Who has kids? Who has toddlers? Who has teenagers? Who has grown up children? Who has a significant other or a spouse, a husband, wife, right? Who's bought a car in the last five years? Guys, we all have negotiation experience and like kids are masters. So parents out there, if you're listening in, I got to tell you, you have a heck of a lot of negotiation experience, but just don't, your kids may be better at it than you are, but we're going to work on that. So here's, let's hit some of the psychology right up front because folks, by anchoring this, these concepts into how you approach negotiation uh, in your real estate business, or even just how you build your relationships with your buyers and sellers, this can make all the difference in the world. This makes our negotiation easier. We are going to get into specific, some uh, specific negotiation techniques and what to say and some tools that you can use to make that smoother and efficient. But the more you have the psychology base in place in how you are being with your clients, the easier your no negotiation is going to be. So I want to start with a little discussion about the DISC profile. Now, a lot of you, a lot of you are familiar with the DISC, and some of you are like, I have no idea what you're talking about, Julie. Or you'll hear Candace mentioned just in this section just before, she said something about she's an ISC, but now she's probably an IS. And you're like, what is that foreign language? Some of you know, and some of you don't. So the DISC profile, it's a behavior type tool that's used not just in the real estate industry, but it's used professionally out there all over the place. You can actually find a free assessment, I think on the Tony Robbins website. I think if you go to tonyrobbins.com forward slash D-I-S-C, you can, you can take the DISC assessment. So if you've never done that, I do recommend that, that you do because it comes up often. So there's four type uh, type of uh, behavior types in the DISC assessment. So D-I-S-C, dominant, interactive, the steady and patient, and then the C is the compliant perfectionist. And it's really important, one, to understand kind of how you're wired, but then in alignment, how is your buyer or seller, what is their behavior type? And of course, if you, let's say you have a, a, a husband, wife, that's a buyer or seller, they're not the same people. So you can totally have two behavior types with that. But tuning into their behavior, behavior, uh, behavior types and their communication preferences is going to help you be a better negotiator and communicator with them. So a, a dominant extrovert, how are they wired? What is effective in negotiation with a strong driver personality? Well, keep in and, and, and take some notes here. And by the way, there's a um, for those of you that are with EXP on Workplace, I have a group that's called Negotiation Tips and Best Practices. It's easy to find if you type in negotiation, it'll pop up on your screen. Um, I have 
all of this outlined in that group. I have downloads, things that you can export, et cetera, including this that I'm talking about right now with the disc. So the strong dominant personalities, they love to drive. So think about a buyer or seller that you've worked with in the past, who's just really kind of strong, okay? Headstrong, just really super confident. Um, they love to drive. You wanna help them win. Um, they're, they tend to be very bottom line focused and a little script that works with them that's very effective with them. And I use this all the time is, hey, the numbers are the numbers and the data is the data. They understand that because you're you're talking their language. Now, you not this may not be your behavioral type, but maybe or or it is, but your ability to meet your client on their level is going to help you be a better negotiator, a, a better communicator with them. Okay. Now the, the interactive influencers, these are the real, they tend to be real social people. Effective with negotiation with them is it's important to let them talk and interact. So if you're that person, if you're that real talkative, interactive uh, agent, you may need to tone that down a little bit because you need to let your buyer and seller talk and interact. Um, keep things good natured and lighthearted with them. If that's not your style, lean in with that a little bit with your real social clients, um, good natured and lighthearted. Um, they understand win-win. Um, asking feeling questions is effective with them. And here's a script that works well or is speaking their language. It's when you say, let's look at this together. That's their language. Now, by the way, and this is, this is just a total bonus with this section. If you can master this skill of adapting to the other person's behavior type, it makes you a better human being. It makes you a better parent. It makes you a better friend. And I'd love to teach an entire session just on that alone, but let's keep going. Okay, so the S, the steady and patient relator, when you're in a negotiation situation with them, okay, they hate conflict. So keep that in mind, that behavior type hates conflict. It's not comfortable for them. So no hard sell with those folks and you need to listen to them. They can be a little slower with decisions. So giving them some space is going to be effective with them. They tend to be unemotional and asking how questions is good with them. Now a script that works with them is, let's see what makes sense to you. You're speaking their language. All right, one more, the last one, the C, the compliant perfectionist. These are your accountants, your engineers. These are folks that love a good spreadsheet, okay? You're real detailed people, okay? If that's the other party, if that's your client, so keep this in mind, what is effective with them? Um, they tend to be cautious, they're definitely detailed, and they're definitely analytical. So the more you can deliver that, the more effective you're going to be with them. So give them facts and data. And then when you think you've given them facts and data, give them more facts and data. You're speaking their language. Stay organized. Avoid small talk with this behavior type. It's not effective with them. If you're the chatty realtor, guess what? You need to tone it down a little bit when your client is the compliant perfectionist. Um, and they have a tendency to get stuck on price only. So you may have to really coach them um, around that. And just like those strong D behavior types, the, the same script works with them. The data is the data, the numbers are the numbers. The data is the data, the numbers are the numbers. So you don't have to explain, 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 explain with the detailed person or the dominant. You can just say the data is the data, is the number of the number. You're talking their language. All right, let's keep going. Big picture with negotiation. Now, by the way, all of this material, I have a slide deck for all of this in that workplace uh, negotiation group. So big picture with negotiation. I'm going to hit some bullets here real quick. So be, so be thinking about this. So one, and this is so critical, the more proactive you are, the more you're working early on communicating with your client before you're even in a negotiation situation, 
the easier your negotiation is going to be. I'm going to dig into that a little more. So stay objective when you're in a negotiation situation, stay objective. What's the objective? Well, guys, here's the simplest objective in real estate, right? The buyer wants to buy the property. The seller wants to sell the property. All we're trying to do is find the middle ground that everyone can agree with. The end goal is the same. The objective is the same. Also keep in mind that the decision is a, or the process is a, decision. It's not a contest of wills. So if folks are kind of starting to lean this way, help them see that all we're trying to do is make a decision that works for everybody. Um, cooperative versus competitive. Um, a failed negotiation. I want to talk about this. Um, in, as, you're, as you're coaching your client through a negotiation, Oftentimes, it can be very helpful to help them understand that, that if we are not able to agree with the other party on, on these terms, on the price, on the terms, so I would call that a failed negotiation. That's a little strong, but you, you get the idea. But it means starting over with that client. And there certainly have been times in my career when I walk through that with a client, maybe a client's digging their heels in on one particular part of the contract, or they're digging their heels in over a couple thousand dollars on a contract. It can really help to provide that perspective to say, look, we're so close here. Let's have a little perspective because if this doesn't work, and I know you really love this house, but if this doesn't work, we're starting all over again. We may be in a multiple offer situation again. We're ta it's taking more time. It's going to take more money. So help them see, um, help them, that, that can help get your buyer or seller sometimes off, you know, off the fence. Um, keep emotions out of it. Let me say that again, my friends. As the realtor, keep your emotions out of it. Our job is to be Mr. and Mrs. Steady in that communication. Always know your timeline. Always know your timeline. Never, ever, ever miss your deadlines or at least be proactive enough in the process to extend them if necessary. But that's not always an option. Because if you're running right up against the deadline, that can reduce your effectiveness with your negotiation. And in most states, uh, verbal does not count. Everything in writing, everything in writing, everything in writing. Um, stick with the facts. Um, understanding your, your market and controlling that dialogue. Guys, I can't emphasize that enough right now. In times of a market shift, this is 100 times more important is understanding your market and being able to manage and control that dialogue to be effective with clients. Right now, we may have a whole bunch of sellers out there that are still thinking that prices were, or at least they're fantasizing that prices were what they were eight months ago, and they're not. And so we have to control that, that dialogue. All right, let's keep going. So is it always price in your negotiation with your buyers and sellers? No, of course, you know, it's not. It's not always price. So it's price in terms and then repairs. It's price in terms and then repairs. Don't always assume that you know what is most important to your client or is most important to the person on the other side of the negotiation. We don't know. We might assume that it's price, 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 price. But guess what? It's not always price or a number that the buyer or seller had in their had in their head a couple days ago is not necessarily the same number that they have in their head today. So don't assume that it's all price. We have to add, you, you got to ask if we have to continually have those conversations. All right. In your negotiations, there's four steps. There's four stages in the negotiation. And there's one key point I want you to remember with this, okay? So uh, stage one is the early stage in, re in relationship building. Stage two is your research and planning. Stage three is where you're actually like physically submitting your offer, your counter offer, okay? That's the writing it up and delivering portion. And then stage four 
is the actual responding options, accept, reject, counter, withdraw. So early stage, research and plan, submit, and then the actual back and forth response negotiation. Here's what I want you to remember with those four steps is that when we think of negotiation, oftentimes we're thinking all about that fourth step. Like, well, we're making a request and we're going back and forth till we can figure out what our agreement is. The point I want you to recognize is steps one, two, and three are the most important. And possibly that relationship building and that research and planning steps one and two are the, the, the steps that are going to actually make the final negotiation a heck of a lot easier. Is this starting to make sense? So the more you do early on, the easier that negotiation is as we go. All right, let's keep going. Um, buyer perspective and strategy. Now, some of this overlaps with uh, with, with seller uh, perspective and strategy. Um, so be listening for those things that may apply to the seller as well, okay? But let's say you are representing the buyer. So put yourself in that mindset. So with your buyer perspective, so be proactive. Now, a lot of this has to do with writing the best offer, writing a good offer, right? When we write unrealistic offers, the, nego we're, the negotiation's harder. So how, how well informed are we for making that offer? So, so before your offer, we need to be engaging with the listing agent. And what's like what's the most what's most important to the seller? Um, is there a specific time frame that the seller needs? Uh, are they looking for a lease back? Obtain as much information as you can. Some of that may be online for you. Read every single thing online, and a actual phone call and conversation with the agent, if that's possible, and hopefully that's possible, can be particularly valuable because it's going to help you write the best offer possible. So always re remind your buyer of the objective. So what is what is their objective? Well, they want to get the house at the right price. That's the objective, right? So I always say to my buyers, I'm like, guys, hey, my goal is for you guys to get the house ideally for the for the least amount of money possible. But I want you to get the house, right? Because this is there's so much education with our buyers to help them be realistic about what are prices go, doing in that neighborhood? So it's all about writing the best offer to set ourselves up for the easier negotiation. I'm a big fan of easy. Um, so prepare your, and then prepare your buyer for how the seller may respond. They may say yes, they may say no, or they may meet us somewhere in the middle. We can negotiate repair, we can re uh, negotiate price, we can negotiate um, closing cost concessions or some combination thereof. So there's a lot of education in there so your buyers understand their options. Now some seller strategy. Again, be proactive. Are, you, are, you, are we seeing a theme here? The more work we do ahead of time, the more preparation we've done with our buyer or seller ahead of time, the easier our negotiations are later. Easy. It's my favorite four letter word is I love an easy negotiation. I've had my share of some challenging negotiations over the years, but we can make it easier on us. We can make it easier on our clients by being proactive. So with the seller, for example, so keep this in mind, and this is you working with your seller. This may be a, a month before you, you're even on the market. The more your seller discloses, discloses about the condition of the property, before any offer negotiations begin, the better, because the buyer is well informed on the house and you're setting yourself and your seller up for an easier negotiation. I'm a fan with my listings and I don't do this 100% of the time, but I do this a fair amount. I'm a fan of my sellers doing a pre-inspection and us including that with a seller's disclosure because I know it makes our negotiation easier. We, we tend to not have repair negotiations in those situations. So you see the theme here is that it's the early work that's making the negotiation easier. Now, here's a little more seller uh, strategy. Here's a script I use with my sellers during the listing appointment or in the preparatory stage with the seller 
that's designed for our negotiations to be easier. And this is an actual script that I use. I'll say, hey, Mr. and Mrs. Seller, the buyers are going to expect the major mechanics of the house to be in good working condition. If they're not, they should either be repaired or we will disclose that and price the home accordingly. I think that's just smart. Um, so, and also prepare your sellers and your buyers, prepare them for what they normally see on an inspection report. So they don't flip out when they see a 35 page report on their house, their house that they really cared for over the years, right? So help manage that expectation because that can make the negotiation easier as well. Uh, and also remember none of no verbal offers, everything in writing, everything in writing. Okay. Um, I also like to say that the more sellers fix things before they go on the market, the easier you know negotiation is going to be. All right. Seller negotiation 101, 201, and 301 has everything to do about how you price that house in the first place. Your, your most effective negotiation has a heck of a lot to do with having a sound pricing strategy and really pricing the house realistically in the first place, right? If you're way overpriced, you're, you, you may be setting yourself up for a difficult negotiation. So our job with our negotiation is way before the negotiation and getting our sellers realistic about um, the, the pricing in the neighborhood, the pricing in the market, the market trends. And that's so super valuable, super important right now in this, um, in this market shift. So pricing, price, so negotiation with your sellers, pricing, 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 pricing. So go take a couple pricing classes, get really, really sharp on that. All right, now let's hit repair negotiations for a few minutes. So repair negotiations. Now this may vary a bit from state to state. I'm in Texas, so I know how it works in Texas. Um, it, this may vary a little bit in your area, but with repair negotiation, so is that happening like in Texas, that tends to happen in in the first, you know, kind of, um, let's say, mm, three to seven days once we're under contract and then we're and then we're done with it typically. OK, so preparing the buyer and seller, what you normally see on an inspection report again. So no one freaks out when they see a, <laughs> these inspection reports are long. Right and also manage your time. So what is the timeline? What are the deadlines? And, and if you're asking for like X, Y, and Z from the seller, so if you're the buyer representing the buyer and you're asking from the seller, giving them enough time, not, not, you know, not throwing this request, you know, on their plate on the second half of the last day, that can be terribly ineffective because you've not given them any time to really process that information or research that information. So really managing your time is super, super key. Um, prepare your buyers, prepare your sellers, prepare everyone to be flexible, prepare them to be reasonable and stick to the facts. Now, um, help help your client have a have a solid repair negotiation strategy for example nickel and dime no it's ineffective and this is part of how you're coaching your clients you're going to say look we need to avoid nickel and dime it's not effective we want to hit the most expensive items we want to hit safety items we want to hit any water issues and any issue that may be important to your lender those are, that's the top, top of the list for repair negotiation. And if your buyer starts kind of going down the nickel dime road, you may be reducing your effectiveness on the things that really matter, the expensive items. Okay. So keep that in mind. Also help your buyers understand the difference between a repair and an improvement. If a house does not have gutters and the buyer wants to ask for gutters to be involved, it, um, um, installed, guess what? That's an improvement. We're not negotiating improvements. We're negotiating repairs. Now, a note on FHA and VA buyers. So whether you're on the seller side and the buyer has the FHA or VA financing or you're working with the buyer with FHA or VA financing, keep this in mind because those because financing has some specific property condition requirements. So for example, VA and FHA loans will typically require 
no peeling paint, no wood rot, no safety issues, no cracked windows, no plumbing leaks, and no termite or pest issues. So if those exist with the house, one, if it's your buyer, that's actually an easy negotiation because you, the, the buyer is probably not going to be able to close that loan without those being repaired. If it's your seller and those, those conditions exist, fix them before you go on the market if you think it's likely to, to attract a VA or FHA buyer. That's just you being smart with your seller that is setting yourself up for a much easier, you're being proactive, you're setting yourself up for a much easier negotiation. So that's with FHA and VA. Um, now, a friend ran this by me the other day or, or recently and said, in negotiation, keep in mind some things that we can learn from lawyers, from attorneys. And I think this provides some nice perspective. So what do attorneys do? They stick to the truth and nothing but the truth. They keep accurate records. They talk clients through legal implications. And lawyers bring these traits to the table. They're detail-oriented, they're organized, they're highly meticulous in their planning and preparation. They have extreme high levels of self-belief and they show confidence in every conversation. And they always listen with the intent to understand rather than focusing on their own response. And that can help us be better negotiators. Now, just a couple things before we bring um, my panelists in to talk through negotiation further. I want to review, I hit some scripts in the last half an hour, I hit some scripts and I want to say them again. Now these are going to be posted on that workplace group so know that you can find them. But here are the scripts that we hit because this can help you be a better negotiator. Remember, the data is the data and the numbers are the numbers. That's good with your detailed clients and your, and your strong dominant types. Or let's look at this together. That's effective with your I and your S types. Let's see what makes sense to you, okay? Here's another one, and this has to do with anyone who wants to move, you know, anything verbal forward. Um, it's You cannot speak on behalf of your client without speaking with your client. So be really careful with that in your negotiation. And the simple script is, I will speak with my clients and get back to you. That's just the standard issue response. I use that all the time. Um, also with the buyer, hey, I want you to get this house for the lowest price possible, but I also want you to get this house. They understand that. We're speaking their language. Um, buyers will expect the major mechanics of the house to be in working condition. If they are not, we should either they should either be repaired or we'll disclose that up front. This sets everybody up for a more realistic uh, negotiation. Okay, so those are some of the scripts. All right, so with your negotiation, remember those early phases and the, the relationship building and starting early and having the solid pricing strategy. Those are all, that's going to help you have the easier negotiation. It's those early phases. Understanding the DISC, the D-I-S-C, and remember you can find that. There's a free version you can take on tonyrobbins.com forward slash DISC, D-I-S-C. Um, train and prepare your clients early on, okay? Guys, as realtors, we are, we're, we're, we're coaches and teachers with our clients. And so the more we are, are working on this early on with our clients, the, the, the more effective your negotiation is going to be. Help your clients see that they have options. We don't want clients to feel like they're backed into a corner. We're building bridges with our clients and, and helping them see that they have options will help. It just kind of brings the energy down a little bit. We don't want, we don't want our clients making decisions in a panic mode. We want them um, in, we want them thinking clearly. Okay. So manage your time, manage the expectations and help your clients keep their eye on the goal. Where are we going? Why are we doing that? What, what, what is in it for this client? Okay. Help them keep their eye on the goal versus getting, you know, caught, caught in the weeds. Um, the last thing I want to mention, I mentioned this earlier, but there's the negotiation group on workplace. There's a lot of material there. There's a longer version of, of this class um, uh, archived. There are handouts that you can use uh, with your buyers and sellers that you can utilize in your business. And even more so, it's a community of agents 
who are engaging in negotiation topics. So if you have a question or a situation, you could plug it into that workplace group and get, get feedback. I'm usually monitoring it, but a whole bunch of other agents are as well. So you can engage your realtor community sometimes to get a little encouragement or tips to help move a negotiation further. Okay, so that's our um, that's our 30 minute negotiation overview, tips and best practices. We talked about sellers, we talked about buyers, we talked about repair negotiation, and we talked about the psychology that's really the glue that holds it all together. So now we're gonna...